Well, all right. I don't like to guess any more than anybody else does. Uh, the alternator doesn't work and the air conditioning quit. I didn't discover them until two different moments in time. Sorry for the wind noise. Um, here's what's going on. Here's my meter. I'm going to set it to ohms. Uh, better to have an auto ranging meter if you can get one. Um, what I'm going to do here is take apart the connector. See it's three pins? Um, we're going to check just the outer, the outer two pins. We're going to check it both directions. I don't know if you can see it down in here, but here's what we're going to do. On this connector down here, here's what we're going to do. We're going to check these outer two pins this way, flip the leads over and check it this way. Now, what I've already done is if you turn your key on, with this disconnected, there's five volts across here. It's not 5.0, it's above it or below it, but you get the idea. So five volts across there, and let's see if I can show you. This is a real pain in the butt to get to. Point 0.4, point 0.5 ohms, okay. So, Half an ohm is very close to a dead short. So we're, in this case, we're just going to call it a dead short. So 5 volts across half an ohm is 10 amps. 5 volts nowhere on this truck draws that kind of current. 5 volts is for logic and, and easy stuff. So there's a problem. Now, that's what I suspected. So then I went and got a new part at the store. While I was in the store before I ever paid for it, I took this exact meter and I did the exact same test on it on the desk on the desk before I bought it. 2.6 M, large M is mega ohms, so 2.6 million ohms this way. Flip it over, and you get absolutely nothing. So essentially, it's a diode across these two pins. It doesn't mean it's a diode, it could be a transistor junction or whatever, but it acts like a diode. So this is brand new. That's what new is supposed to look like. 2 million, 2.6 million ohms, nothing's half an ohm. So that thing right here, the original, I think it's probably the original for this engine, um, crankshaft, it's called an engine speed sensor technically, but some places, some people call it an engine crankshaft position sensor. Um, it's it's not. It's just RPM. There's a notch that travels around the bottom of this and she gives the computer RPM and that tells it, oh, the engine's spinning, so I'll let you turn on the AC and I'll let you turn on the alternator. Or it turns itself on. So, now that I've confirmed that that thing is bad two ways. I measured it half an ohm um, if you do the math, uh, 5 volts divided by 0.5 is 10 amps. Something's wrong with that completely on 5 volts. Um, but to verify it before I even purchased this, I measured it here and it was fine. So, the next step is to get under there. There's a bolt up here. I think it's probably 10 millimeter that holds the connector. So I got to pop that. And there's two, um, I can't tell what they are from here, probably 12s or 13s or 14s down there. And they're a real bear to reach. So I wouldn't put you through the pain and agony. But in a previous video, you can see that the alternator doesn't work. So we, we've established all that. All right, so for right now, I'm going to shut you guys off till I get this done and I'll be back. All right, I got the old one out. It was a biage. Okay, a few caveats. These are important. See the fans loose? I didn't take it off because that's a huge freaking bolt in there, but there's four bolts that hold it to the um, to the clutch. Just take those out so this stupid thing's loose, so you can tilt it and get your wrench in easier. The bolts are four of these. Uh, they are half inch. I use a half inch ratchet wrench. You know. Those stupid things fit in everywhere, and that's what I used. Now, to get in, man, I can't even video it, it's so dark in there. The two studs, there's two studs that stick out, and then two nuts that hold this. 
to get to those, uh, I used a 13 millimeter. A half might have fit, but a 13 fit, and I wasn't going to argue with it. The other thing I did, you'll see the belts off the um, alternator. Basically, all you need to do is put your half inch ratchet in here, take this loose from just the alternator and get it out of the way. What you're really doing is trying to get the tensioner to swing out more so you have more room to work. That and the fan being loose got it out. Now there was one tricky damn thing that I'm not even sure I can show you. Okay, let me point to it. There's a hole right there. And what that holds is the uh, is these standoffs, these tie-offs right here, this one here, and this one here. The top one, the top one right here goes in that hole right there. It's a 10 millimeter, it's really long, and you need a magnet to make sure you don't drop it, okay, while you're wrenching it out. That's one. The second one down below, let me point to it again. right above my bare fingertip right there that one has to go completely out till it hits the back of this pulley and then what you do is you start pulling it downward by pulling on the wiring harness for this uh, crankshaft sensor and it, I, can't, I thought I was gonna have to take this pulley off but it pulled down and angled down and came out and it just barely makes it so don't yank on it hard but just work it out it was a biatch, but those two things, loose fan and the idler is all the way out because there's no more belt tension on it. Um, yeah, I know it's gonna be fun putting it back, but that's okay, it was worth it. Okay, so, a couple differences. The original has one hole and a slot to pivot, and this thing does not have that. It looks like they made it more universal, probably fit more vehicles is probably what they did. But um, now you gotta put it in. Now one thing I wanna demonstrate, see if I can find the feeler gauges. Now some people say, oh yeah, it's magnetic, you gotta use a, um, a brass feeler gauge. Let me, it's hard to show. Okay, let's see, here we go. The wind's blowing. See how that barely takes that fine one over? What is that, 15? Now that's one and a half thousandths. Man, I can't even add today. I thought that was 50. Ah. Anyway, you see it's just barely, if you take the big one in, it barely sticks. The new one, the new one, I, I think it sticks less. So I'm going to use a steel feeler gauge. I know I have a brass set somewhere, but I can't find them. So anyway, um, use whatever you got. I wouldn't be afraid to use steel even a little bit. Um, in fact, the magnetism may help hold your feeler gauge in place because it's going to be a bitch down there. In fact, what I would do, um, here's my first guess having not done it yet. Take your 2, your 15, and your 35 off your set and put some tape at each end and put them in there and let the magnetism hold them in place. And then push down on it, tighten the nuts, and then pull them out. I don't think it's any harder than that because having this whole damn thing hanging around down there, it's just gonna be a total pain in the ass. There's not any room. <clears throat> All right, so time to put it back in. I wanted to show you those hints for right now, so, but more later. One other improvement I just found is on the new one, the lower clamp, the lower strain relief, you see this edge, the whole edge is rounded. And that matters, because when you're trying to get that stupid bolt out, rotating this helps a lot. This one didn't want to rotate because it's got square ends on it. So this is an improvement for installation and removal right here. <clears throat> it should help. In fact, see how far the distance is from the center of the hole to the edge? I'd be half tempted to cut about half of that off, but we'll see how it goes in. Well, as it turns out, it's a good thing to take the belt clear out of your way, man. All the way down to all the way up on this side, take it out. <clears throat> it just makes things easier. Like I said, the fan, that out of the way, 
and this thing unsprung will just make it a lot easier. Okay, so the new one's bolted in. <clears throat> I did just what I said I'd do. You tape it together, stick it in there, force it down with a screwdriver while you tighten the left nut. <clears throat> and that'll hold it in place till you tighten the right one. So now what I'm trying to do is show you guys, you see way down there, there's basically three fingers way down in that hole. There's three fingers and the, uh, the wires coming from the crank sensor have to go behind that. It's a bitch, man. I'm not kidding. I'm not being impolite here. I'm just telling you, it's a bitch. So, now I'm going to try and put that bolt in I was telling you about earlier. But this is a note you need to remember. That, that thing's a pain in the butt. Okay. Trying to get this bolt in. I'll be back in a bit. Alrighty. I got it routed. If you can see down there where the three fingers are. You take a screwdriver and you push that third finger just gently on top of this. It holds everything out of the way. See that one? That's a bitch. They're all a bitch. I guarantee it. Here's another one. 10 millimeter pain in the butt. But it's all installed. I got the belt back on. Let's go find out if it works. Alright kids, let's see what happens when we start it up. Oh, look at that! Needle has climbed at 12 volts and higher. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. All right, so the only thing left to do is unmodify the air conditioning circuit, put it back stock, and see if this um, crankshaft sensor fixed that too. I suspect it probably did. But I'll leave the wire in and all that so that if I ever need to modify it in the future, everything's already laid out. Let me show you what I mean. Hot damn, it's working. All right, so there's the air conditioning modification. There's the wire, there's the relay. So I'm gonna put all that back stock, but I'm gonna leave the wire there in case I ever have to put it back to this modified condition. Because I think um, all of this was this, uh, cotton pick and crankshaft sensor. And I, I want this to re regulate the temperature properly so it doesn't freeze up the core. I want that to work properly. So anyway, that's it for now. It works, it's fixed. I showed you earlier how to check it with an ohm meter. And man oh man, that just about guaranteed a perfect diagnosis. Because guessing is bullshit. This is a $70 part. And to be wrong is a pain in the ass. Anyway, that's it for now, man. I gotta go have dinner. See you, bye.